Hi, my name is Cliff Woolley. I'm here today to talk to you about how you can accelerate your application with the PGI Accelerator compiler. PGI Accelerator gives us a directive-based approach to parallelizing your code. What this means is that you can take your existing sequential source code and you can add some directives to the code, which are basically hints to the compiler. And this allows you to tell the compiler how it should go about parallelizing the loops that you have in your code. And you can also tell it how it should go about managing data transfer between the CPU and the memory of our GPU accelerator. Now this works with either C or Fortran code. And if you happen to have existing CUDA C or CUDA Fortran code, then you can combine it with that as well. These directives are formatted as comments in the code, so this allows the code to work just fine in the original serial execution case, and you maintain complete portability of the code. So let's take an example here where we annotate some code with some directives. So um, first, let's look at what those directives are. We'll, of course, install the compiler package from PGI and then use these ACC directives shown here in the Fortran syntax. And we can specify a data region, which tells the compiler where it should copy data to and from the accelerator, and an inner region, which is where the actual parallel computation should happen. Then we can compile using the PGI Fortran compiler, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we do that later on. As a case study, let's take a look at a Laplace solver that's using Jacobi iteration. Now, this is a very common calculation done in many fields of science, electromagnetism, astrophysics, fluid dynamics. And as a test platform for the measurements we'll do of performance, we'll use a system with the dual socket Intel Xeon X5860 with 12 cores, and compare that against an NVIDIA Tesla C2075 GPU. So first, the sequential Fortran implementation. What we have here is an outer do loop that is basically repeating the computation until we reach convergence, and then an inner nested set of loops that do the bulk of the computation. And basically, all they're doing is iterating across the elements of a matrix and calculating new values for those elements based on their neighbors. So when we run this in a single-threaded fashion on this, on this Xeon X5860 CPU, we see that the total time is 147 seconds. So now let's look at how we might parallelize this using OpenMP for multi-core CPU, since you might be familiar with OpenMP. Well, what we do with OpenMP is we find this inner loop where the bulk of the computation happens, and then we insert directives immediately before and after it to tell OpenMP how it might go about parallelizing those loops across a number of threads. We tell OpenMP a few extra things about what these threads will need to do to collaborate with each other. So for example, we tell OpenMP which values will be shared across various threads, and also how it should go about taking the results of the various threads, which in this particular case are stored in error, and compute a final result from them, which for this particular code is a reduction using a max operation on the error. So taking this OpenMP implementation, running it across a multi-threaded CPU with 12 threads on the same Xeon X5860, we see that the total time goes from 147 seconds down to 86 seconds for a total speed up of 1.7x. So now going back to our sequential implementation, let's look at how we would parallelize this with PGI Accelerator. In this particular case, it's very similar to OpenMP, as you can see, but we've added in some additional information to the compiler. So again, we specify where the inner calculations would happen with this ACC region directive. But we now add a, an additional portion of directives, which are the data region begin and end. And what this allows us to do is avoid repeated transfers of the data between the host and the accelerator memories between iterations of the loop, since after all, we don't need to copy the entire matrix back and forth between the CPU and the GPU every time we go through this do loop, since all we're trying to do is reach convergence. So we can leave the data on the GPU until we get to the very end and we've converged, and then we can copy our result back. So let's look at how we would actually compile this using the PGI Accelerator compiler. Basically, you take your, exist, your existing 
Fortran code that you've added these directives to, you run it through PGF90, and since we want to compile for GPUs in this particular case, we add a few extra flags, dash m CUDA, dash TA equals NVIDIA, and that tells the compiler to build for NVIDIA GPUs. Now we could have left those off, and the same exact directives would have allowed the PGI Accelerator to compiler to build for multi-core CPU. So you can take the exact same set of directives and have it work on multi-core CPU or on NVIDIA GPUs. What the compiler tells us with this additional dash m info equals excel flag is a bit of information about what the compiler was able to do based on our directives. So we can see where it tells us that it was able to generate a copy of these particular matrices into the GPU memory, and then also it acknowledges that the loops we asked it to parallelize were in fact parallelizable, and it tells us a little bit about how it went about accomplishing that. So when we take this code and we run it out on our NVIDIA Tesla C2075, we see that the total time has gone down now to 35 seconds for a total speed up of 2.5x over our baseline. Now a common way to structure your workflow when using the PGI Accelerator would be to repeat the same process a number of times, since a typical application will be a bit more complex than the simple example we've just seen. So what you might do is program take your program and run it through a profiler that allows you to locate particular hotspots in the code, and then add a few parallelization directives to the dominant loops in the portions of the code that are most significant in the program's profile, in the same way that we did just did in the previous example. Now, after you've done that, you can basically repeat the entire process, and each time through, you can parallelize a bit more of your program until, after iterating a number of times, you parallelized as much as possible. A number of locations have already had great success with this approach. So for example, a large oil company was able to get 3x on their code in just seven days of work. University of Houston had a particular case study where they showed 20x speed up in just two days of work. Um, similarly, University of Melbourne, 65x in just two days, and so on. In summary, PGI Accelerator is easy to use, and as you saw just now, we were able to get 2.5x speed up with only just a few minutes of work and very limited changes to the code. Now, we've actually got a partnership between NVIDIA and PGI for a program we're calling 2x speed up and four weeks guaranteed. And what this will allow you to do is to download today a free copy of the PGI Accelerator compiler and try it out on your code. And if it turns out that you can't get this 2x speed up in four weeks, then we'll provide free consulting to help you get that. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great day.